there's been a lot of conversation recently about like Xbox and like people thinking Xbox is like dying. I was going to watch a video uh, about for this. For the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. Wow. Wow, it's an X. Stop me if you By the way, Xbox went so hard whenever it first came out. Heard this one before. Xbox stepped on a rake again. For the umpteenth time in the past decade, yeah. Microsoft has found itself on the wrong end of bad news. And as usual, it's self-inflicted. Just as Team Green <laughs> was starting to gather some positive momentum, yeah. Fallout is the biggest show on TV, boosting all the Fallout mm -hmm. games along with it, the upcoming launch of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, and that may be the very kind of prestige, single-player, narrative-driven, third-person action-adventure that the brand has long lacked. Would you give your life for these outsiders? The next Xbox showcase was also announced for June 9th, Ooh. where we might finally see the long-anticipated next entry in the Gears of War series, the next entry in Call of Duty, and more. Xbox Brass torched the morale of customers and quite possibly its own developers alike by announcing the closure of three studios, Tango Gameworks, Arcane Austin, and Alpha Dog, and the consolidation of a fourth, Roundhouse. Fans were quick to point back to recent and now hypocritical seeming quotes from Xbox executives, such as marketing boss Aaron Greenberg saying last year that just axed developer Tango Gameworks' Hi-Fi Rush was, quote, a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. And in the 2021... Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like, it seems... It's very odd that they did that. But I don't think that Xbox needs to... Like, trying to appeal to really vocal fans on social media really isn't a good decision. I think that as long as they're... I think that Xbox, like, people think about, like, Xbox... Like, Sony, I think that for making games and PlayStation... Sony is very narrow in their vision. I think that Xbox has a much lar larger vision for that because they are able to monetize PC users uniquely because they also, uh, you know, monetize through having Windows, right? So, and I think also there's going to be cloud gaming and other things like that too. Xbox is useless, yeah. Xbox documentary Power On, Sarah Bond said the leadership team asked themselves how to learn from and not repeat the same mistake of acquiring a studio, in this case, original Fable developer Lionhead, yeah. only to later shut them down. Yeah, well done. And one year ago, in the wake of Redfall's disastrous launch, mm -hmm. Xbox boss Phil Spencer said, quote, one thing I won't do is push against the creative aspirations of our teams. When a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango Gameworks mm -hmm. wants to do Hi-Fi Rush, when everyone thought they were probably doing the Evil Within 3, I want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability, to push their aspirations." End quote. I don't think that Xbox can win a console war because Xbox isn't releasing their games on console only. The reason why people generally, I would say, buy a PlayStation is because there are games that you can only play on a PlayStation. That's not true with Xbox. That right there, they don't have exclusivity, yes. And like, I hate exclusivity. I think it's awful. There's no benefit for the customer that they have exclusivity, except for maybe the games come out like slightly faster because they only need to be optimized for like one device. Other than that, exclusivity is extremely consumer unfriendly, right? Because like a lot of people don't have $500 to drop on a new console whenever the fuck there's a new game that comes out that they want to play. So I don't think Xbox can compete and I don't think that they should try to. They should just have the Xbox. People will keep buying Xboxes forever, but don't invest a lot of money into this. Um, it's over. Yeah, it's over. At best, those once reassuring quotes ring hollow today. At worst... Because, like, again, like, I bet also, like, the PlayStation... Like, the, Playsta the PlayStation Network Pass or PlayStation Plus or whatever the fuck it is. Like, basically, PlayStation's version of Game Pass. I bet Game Pass probably outsells it 10 to 1. I wouldn't be surprised if it was more. And I think that pretty much for sure, it, it, it's more in general. So yeah, I, I think that Xbox, like they are, the way that they're monetizing is different than Sony. It's totally different.
their outright lies. We've come a long way from Xbox fans once proudly decreeing in Phil we trust and posting mm -hmm. photoshopped Dark Knight-esque I believe in Phil Spencer buttons online. Awfully, Bloomberg reports that Microsoft might not be done making cuts. So this may very well get- Oh, yes. The, the firings will continue until morale improves or until actually profits improve. At worst, it's gonna keep it happening for sure. 100%. For developers, that would mean further job losses. And for gamers, well, yeah, of that might mean another possible Xbox Game Pass ultimate price increase. So how did we get here? Why can't Xbox stop tripping over its own two feet? And with the Xbox organization growing so massive over the past half decade, and its reach extending not just to consoles, but to any device capable of playing video games, can the soul of Xbox even be saved? No. I no. Uh, they've got probably two more generations left in them, and then it's going to be completely irrelevant. And this is a good thing, because technology evolves. It's the same as like how we don't get Game Boys anymore. Like there isn't really a new Game Boy, right? Because now you just have the Nintendo Switch. That's it. One at best. Do you think it's one? I think they can probably. I think they'll they'll try to do two. Yeah, ph phones have cannibalized that. This the Switch has cannibalized that. Bad example. No, it's just like no. I think it's a perfect example because what people used to use a Game Boy for, now they're using a phone for. Now they're using a Nintendo Switch for. So, like, you're seeing this market for, like, consoles become shrinkingly uh, smaller, right? And it's, it's becoming that more and more and more. Spoke to two former longtime Xbox employees separately, and both mm -hmm. lamented the current state of the brand. One told me prior to this week's awful studio closure news, quote, I had lengthy conversations with a bunch of Xbox founders, and we all came to the same conclusion. It's no longer Xbox but Microsoft gaming. That's good. That's a good thing. I understand if you're an Xbox fan, you're not going to like that. But I think that's good. Ouch. The other the face, chatted yeah. with me at length after the Bethesda bloodbath and believes Xbox is now too big to quickly or easily get its house in order. Oh, there is just too much surface area. You have effectively three huge companies at play, mm -hmm. and Microsoft never really finished the integration with Bethesda. And Activision is like three times the size Xbox was. Yeah. They added, quote, Xbox 360 launched with a few hundred people. Last I heard, Xbox is now almost 30,000 people. 30,000 people. I wonder how many people it will be by the end of the year. How about by the end of next year? Maybe 20,000, maybe 25. Of course this is gonna happen. They're trying to hold on to an antiquated model. I think that Sony can keep doing it, but they are doing it at the expense of the consumer. Like Sony is winning this war because they're doing things that are consumer unfriendly, whereas Xbox is not. That growth has led to, in the opinion of the Xbox veteran I spoke to, mm -hmm. increased oversight and meddling from further up the Microsoft food chain. And I also want to say too, that even if Xbox did the exact same thing that Sony did, Sony would still wipe the fucking floor with them because every Xbox exclusive right now is fucking trash. Like Halo sucks. Um, Gears of War is non-existent. Redfall was a disaster. Hi-Fi Rush, you know, again, popular game, a lot of rewards, but people aren't playing it to say, like, there's more people playing Skyrim than people playing Starfield. They have failed in basically everything this year in terms of games. Every single game that they've tried to put out has been a failure. Think about how awful that is. Quote, the reason this seems so inconsistent with previous Xbox leadership team statements mm -hmm. is that these decisions probably aren't being made by Phil. This is all getting dictated by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella and Microsoft CFO Amy Hood, and it all stems from the Activision acquisition. Yeah. End quote. The long tenured ex Xboxer continued quote, The situation Xbox was in when they made this call was much different. They couldn't keep consoles in stock, making money hand over fist with Game Pass growth. Mm -hmm. The Activision acquisition seemed like a no-brainer. 
Now console sales are down, post COVID recession, Game Pass slowing. The acquisition was more costly and time consuming than anyone expected. And the focus on fighting the FTC probably cost them time they would have spent thinking through the people and studio implications. I think that they're also worried about getting regulated. I think that after the FTC thing, like that's the same reason why I think that they're moving a lot of games onto Steam. I don't think that Xbox is moving the games onto Steam for any other reason other than avoiding the accusation that they could be a monopoly. That's what they're really trying to fight against. And I don't think that they really care. Because you think about like, think about how much more cataclysmic that would be than them losing a console war. Which one is worse? Getting determined as a monopoly by the FTC and getting the entire company broken up? Or you lose the console war? Again, right? Xbox is functioning on a level that Sony doesn't have to worry about. I 100% believe this is a board level decision. Yeah. Xbox was a huge- and If I was on the board of Xbox, I'd do the same thing. I think they're right. Profit center, so Satya approved a huge merger. Now games are slowing and Microsoft stock mm -hmm. is skyrocketing and there is no way Satya is going to let Xbox drag it down. Yep. This is all my opinion, of course, but I'm fairly certain these are not decisions being made only by Xbox leadership. You can be 100% certain about that. Yeah, of course. That's not to absolve Spencer. Gavin not even in the console war and yet he still wins. For his role in all of this, unlike the yeah. tone deaf, won't someone think of all the multimillionaire oh, yeah. executives response of former Xbox higher up Mike Ibarra, Spencer is, after all, the person in charge of the entire organization. The buck stops with him. The Bethesda well, and Activision yeah. Blizzard acquisitions happened on his watch. Yeah. As such, he is no more shielded from criticism for being, by most accounts, including my own for the record, a very nice guy than the star professional athlete is for- well, well, this is what happens, right? Whenever you're in a leadership position, you own the successes of your team and you also own their failures. We all know that it probably wasn't Phil Spencer that was in their programming Redfall to make it bad, but it's still his responsibility, even though it's not his fault. And it's the same thing with any of this. Like that's what being in a leadership position means. It means taking shit and also getting shit for things that in a lot of cases weren't entirely your doing. And this is just another example of that. Underperforming on the field or court, despite regularly signing autographs for kids before games. Yeah. But no matter who's to blame for the weight of Activision Blizzard seemingly tipping Xbox's <laughs> scales out of balance, it's now fair to wonder if and how Spencer can save Xbox's soul. Is Xbox a gaming brand that means anything to gamers anymore? Can it stand toe to toe with Sony and Nintendo? And if the answer to those questions- No, no it can't. I think that the way that they need to market Xbox is they need to market it as a tool in the same way that Steam Deck is marketed almost like a tool. Like Xbox needs to effectively function as a PC light. I think that's what they have to do as a service. Yeah, Xbox becomes a service rather than a console. And people will buy the console for ease of access to the service, the same as people would buy an iPod so they can use iTunes. That's like, or so, so they can interface better with iTunes. That's, I think, the only thing they can do. That's what they're doing, of course, right? I mean, the people that work at Microsoft are really smart. Like, it's like, you have to understand that, like, these decisions that they're making are not stupid. Is yes. well, I can say that, but then they also released Redfall. So maybe they're not that smart. But I feel like they've got to at least know what the fuck's talking, what they're talking about whenever it comes to money, right? Then what defines Xbox? Giving way too much credit? Is it I don't know, Xbox man. Game Pass? Three trillion dollar company. Is it big exclusive franchises like Halo, it's not. Forza, That's what it's Gears of War, not. That's 100 Fable, and not. maybe should they end up being exclusive? The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and Doom? Is it gaming anywhere seamlessly through PC, mobile, console, cloud, and handheld support that's invisible to the end user? Can it be all of these? Should it be all of these? Or does Xbox then become a jack of all trades, master of none? After all, when you think of either play- I think that what they could maybe do is if they were able to create a device that could 
stream cloud gaming at a 99% lossless ratio, they would probably outsell Sony and PlayStation. I think that's the only way that they could that they could be successful in that market. The tech isn't there yet. I know. But I'm saying that like it, uh, theoretically a cloud gaming device that's an Xbox I think would be the only thing that could work. PlayStation or Nintendo, you arguably think of iffy. one thing iffy, yeah. and one thing alone. Consistently incredible exclusive games. That's it. We could have killed you. <sighs> Maybe you should have. If the board is pushing Xbox in this direction, will Spencer push back? These decisions, no matter who's making them, are costing Xbox an incredible amount of both talent and community trust. Spencer knows that, and it's up yeah. to him to fix it. To this point, I would have argued that up until this past week, Spencer's 10-year term as head of Xbox could be summed up as such. Gamer-first initiatives like backwards compatibility, accessibility, cross- uh, Keep in mind that backwards compatibility and accessibility were only arrived at because of Sony putting market pressure on them and then outselling them with the PlayStation 4. So this actually never happened because of Microsoft. This was completely because of Sony. So the it, it, in a weird way, right? It's like the thing that we're thinking is so good about Microsoft is actually because of Sony. Play and Xbox that doesn't matter. Game yes, Pass, it does. But he has yet to deliver either the single breakthrough blockbuster game that captures the zeitgeist or the steady flow well, of here's the blockbuster reason. game that captures the Why did they make Cortana look like that? She looks ugly. She used to be way hotter in the original games. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? You stupid? the fuck are you doing like I, i'm i mean look i mean am i the, do i have to say it like geist or the steady flow of high quality that's not cortana do you think that would change anything about what i'm saying no she should be hot Exclusive games that read loyalty a to a platform. It's not even a question. Now, though, what? he will likely be remembered primarily by how he handles this moment. Can he organize a five company monolith, Xbox, Bethesda, Activision, oh, Blizzard, and King, into a single entity that makes both gamers and shareholders happy? Is that even possible? If he can't, the Activision Blizzard King acquisition may prove to be more trouble than it's worth. Completely disagree with that. I, I do. I completely disagree with that. I think that a lot of people that are like Xbox fans are only thinking about the success of Xbox. There's the video right there. I thought it was a pretty, pretty good video. IGN take. No, I, I like these videos. I think they're great. I, I wish they made more of them. They're, they're great content to talk about, too. If he can, he'd be the next emperor of mankind. I think the only way an Xbox can be competitive, I think the only way that Xbox can be competitive in the market is if, and you remember this back in the day, out of Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2, Xbox, in terms of graphics and performance, was the best. And it was like not like way, way better, but it was better. And Xbox right now is like this, not really that, that great. It's about the same, right? PlayStation 5, in my opinion, I think looks better, but that's just my opinion. Uh, overall, Xbox Live was leaps ahead for years. It was. And even whenever Sony tried to compete with them, well, like Sony's networks went down for like, what, three months? Back in like 20, 20, 2009, 2010, 2011, somewhere around there. Like, so I think that they have to do something that nobody has done before in the same way that Nintendo did with the Switch. Like the Nintendo Switch and really the Nintendo Switch, the, the Wii U walked so the Nintendo Switch could run, basically. So they've already done this. Like Nintendo had already has already done this. And there are so many portable consoles right now that you don't really need another one. I think that the only way that they could capture a new market is a actual successful version of Google Stadia or cloud gaming. And as people mentioned, and I think they're right, I don't think that we're there yet technologically. At least I certainly don't think that I don't think so, right? 
That's the only thing that I think they can do to where they can actually compete in the console market. Nintendo adapted. Nintendo did adapt. And they are the best at adapting. And so whenever I see this, computer is still expensive. Yeah. Like, I think that Xbox needs to transition to being more of a service. I, and I think they're doing that with the Game Pass. You said Game Boy is dead, but I still wish they were doing 3DS and portable console. I don't like the Switch as a portable. Yeah, but that, that I mean, I, yeah, I can see why you feel that way. But Game Boy is dead, right? Xbox should be a laptop? Maybe, yeah. Game Pass is bad, to be honest. Well, there's a lot of people that disagree and they like Game Pass. Everybody's going to have their own value proposition for it. So the Sega route for Xbox? Maybe you're right, yeah. Because, like, there's no law of, of, the, of humanity that says that Xbox needs to exist in perpetuity. Xbox was Microsoft's foray into the console market inside of a world that was completely different than what we have now. Like a lot of you guys, actually, to be honest, like a lot of you guys, like we're, we're all mostly older guys, right? So you remember the Sega Genesis, you remember the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, the Odyssey, the Atari, um, the uh, Neo Geo, Nokia made a gaming, uh, a gaming console, the Game Gear, the Dreamcast, Sega Saturn. What are some more of them? Uh, the Commodore 64. Oh man, the Jaguar. Yeah, that's that. That was the portable one. Uh, the uh, the Lynx. Yeah, the Lynx was also a portable, I think, as well. The in yes, the Engage was Nokia. Sega CD. I had that one. So back in like the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, mainly the 80s and the 90s, there were like 10 different players in the console market. And then towards the end of the 90s, you had a lot of players coming into the portable console market. And again, like this was just what happened. So. I, I think this is the way it was for actually probably longer than it is the way that, that it is now almost. Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I remember that. And so mass innovation. Yeah, exactly. So Xbox's biggest problem is saying one thing in an interview and then doing something completely contradictory. Even the mobile store yesterday had an update that made it sound like a coupon page. I disagree with that. The reason why I disagree is because... Xbox will never live or die based off of what they say publicly because 95% of Xbox consumers are not making decisions based off of what they're saying because they're not listening. Console gamers are, by definition, less engaged. They're not paying attention to everything that Xbox is saying. They're not paying attention to like statements that Xbox made and like cross referencing them versus like statements that like Xbox said like five years ago or th six months ago. Like they're not thinking about that because these are casual gamers. The only thing they're thinking about is I could buy an Xbox and I could get these games or I could buy a PlayStation and I can get those games. And guess what happens? They buy a PlayStation. That's what happens. If they cared that much, they buy a PC. Yeah, there you go. So. That's in general, like, that. that's kind of what I think is happening. And again, I don't really see, I don't see Xbox, I just, I don't see them popping off, and I don't see them holding a big audience anymore. I just don't see it happening. Their games are way better. Yeah, I think so too. Xbox is transitioning into a live service. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing. Okay, do you, you can look at them, and then the eyes they lose, it's more fun. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's already happening. I think so too. And just in general, that's going to be the new normal, I believe. Trying to get my friends into PC gaming, but I think the way I can convince them is if I pay for half as a gift. I, I think really the best way to get somebody into PC gaming, I don't know. I, I feel like PC gaming, like you do have to know at least a little bit about it versus console. So if you don't really care about PC gaming, you're probably not going to stay invested into it. And also, it's a lot of money. Yeah, get them a Steam Deck. I think, a, yeah, that's a really great idea. Yeah, a Steam Deck is probably the best foray into it more than anything else. You check investors for friendships. It's almost safe to say that Steam and Windows will merge soon in the future. Cloud gaming will be the excuse. If Steam and Windows merged, I mean, after I saw what Microsoft did to Skype, I'm a little bit nervous about that, to be honest with you. I, I don't think that would be a good thing. I would prefer if Steam stayed its own thing.